Good morning. We'll start with the opening prayer, which is the great invocation from the point of light within the mind of God. Let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth from the point of love within the heart of God. Let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Amen. Amen. And announcements for today. If you would like to reserve a seat for next Sunday, please sign up at the rear of the sanctuary, or you can use the online registration form during the week. Seating for January 31st and the entire month of February is currently open via online registration. On February 14th, we will be welcoming Reverend Marsha McCartney as our guest speaker. Reverend Laurie will be doing a service for the folks in Vero Beach. Our annual all-member meeting will be held on February 28th. Be sure to mark your calendars. More information on how we will safely host this meeting will be forthcoming. Are there any other announcements this morning? And now I believe we'll have our gathering song. As times unfold in me, it has revealed to me life's nothing less than sublime with every thought I make every last breath I take may I be gracious and kind love I invite you to open up this heart of mine Love, cover me, light any darkness. Love, cover me, right every wrong. Cause me to see love over hatred. Guide me to be faithful and strong. Love, cover me. Love, cover me. wash over me make me a symphony play every note you can find make me reverberate gently deactivate slowly flow out of my mind find me a melody dance and let my anthem be Love, cover me, light any darkness. Love, cover me, right every wrong. Cause me to see love over hatred. Guide me to be faithful and strong. Love, cover me. Love, cover me. Love, 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 love. 
sing that one. was beautiful. We're getting to see so many talented musicians with these videos. They're just outstanding. Uh, let's together speak unity's foundational principle. There is only one power, one presence active in the universe and in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. And when we live this principle and walk our talk, we are a thriving spiritual community here to inspire one another to realize God's love. Centered in the spirit of God, we see peace, love, and abundance in an awakening world. And the Daily Word for Sunday, February 7, 2021. Inner Peace. I express the peace of God. Peace, be still. With these words, Jesus claimed his authority and calmed the stormy waters. Following Jesus' example, I too claim authority. In a stressful moment, I center my awareness in the divine presence that lives in me and expresses through me. This divine presence is perfect light, love, and wisdom. It is peace that nothing and no one can disturb. No matter what may be happening around me, at the center of my being, there is always peace. It is an aspect of my divine inheritance, as near as my next thought. I release all fear and tension and embrace the peace of God. As I do, divine peace radiates from the center of my being. It clarifies my thoughts, calms my emotions, and relaxes my body. In every situation, I am a presence of peace. And from the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 3, those of steadfast mind you keep in peace, in peace because they trust in you. And I think we have another one music video. So without all I need is here and now where there's air let me love may I have no fear all the power all the glory I surrender let Loving spirit dwells in me. 
now and evermore. Loving spirit dwells in me. This is my divinity. As within, so now to prepare for a time of quiet and meditation of going within, becoming still, and allowing God. So I invite you to get very comfortable in your chairs. Take off anything from your lap that might distract you. Take in a nice, deep, cleansing breath, a healing breath, and just let go. Let go of any worries any fears, any busy thoughts. This is your time. Your time to be reminded of the power of the presence of God always there. Let yourself feel that warm embrace, that strength. Just relax. Begin at the top of your head, that highest chakra, above the crown, and open fully and allow God's light to flow through every part of your body. The more you practice this, the more you will feel it might feel like a gentle light flowing through you, a vibration, a gentle movement, a massage, the energy of divine creation always in the movement through you, healing, cleansing, restoring. As you focus on your crown and your brain, see the bright color blue, royal blue. Just focus on that color, that brilliant hue. That jumps out when you see it. on the feather of a bird, on the color of an ocean near the sand, but vivid, clear. Just continue to allow that light to flow. Feel if there's any area where you're feeling, feeling any tenseness that you may not even realize you're tensing your shoulders, your neck, back, lower back, your arms, your hands, are they clenched? Your abdomen, is it clenched tight? Your thighs, your feet, sometimes we clench and tighten without realizing. As we become still, the body has an opportunity to do what God designed it so magnificently to do. 
regenerate, heal, restore, cleanse. This is a gift we give our beautiful temple, one of God's happy spaces. So rest. Direct your attention now in the center, the core of your being, the area of your heart organ, that magnificent organ, that link to divinity. With each breath, feel the pulse, the pumping, nutrient, fresh resources into every area of your body, restoring, healing, reviving. In rest, every organ has an opportunity to slow down, work more efficiently, to ease the stress. And it is here we can go within and listen for that internal guidance. The heart muscle is a powerful brain for the whole body. We direct our attention here and imagine yourself away from this space and time in a cabin deep in the snowy woods, spring not quite showing herself yet. The snow is white and deep, and you are tucked away in this safe space in front of a fire in a very comfortable chair, just observing the dying flames the embers and coals still red and glowing. There is a neatly stacked pile of wood right beside you and you put a few of those logs on, push them around in the embers and they begin to sparkle, rekindle. Begin to breathe a little deeper as you blow onto those embers. Imagine your heart, those embers, and as you breathe, that heart begins to open and light up, sparkle, come to life, rekindle. With each breath, it opens a little further, a little broader, a little brighter, a gorgeous flower, the petals opening wide. Just allow your heart to open wide. And in the quiet, allow yourself to feel what your heart is feeling, what is coming through, what is being revealed, released. Just observe what is coming up and coming out. No judgment. If there is pain, observe it. Feelings, observe. Let God bring anything you are storing, consciously or otherwise. Just allow in the quiet a time of releasing and relaxing and observing.
it is here in this quiet space that we can seek a deeper understanding, ask questions, knock on that door, seek. Here we are restored, reminded of our worth, the power of God's love. It is here we can go for whatever we need, the endless supply waiting for us. And it is in this space we can vision for our life, individually, for our life, collectively. So let us take this opportunity to simply open to a vision for humanity, for our beloved planet. As we recover from this pause, and rebuild relationships and ways of working and moving through life with a much greater understanding of God and the power of love. Setting an intention to join with others determined to vision and become a world that works for everyone, and we see that blooming right now. And as we bring our attention back to this space and time, let us hold that intention of purpose in our hearts, in our cells, in our mind, knowing we will have everything we need do that which lies ahead of us. With this opportunity to be reminded of the power of God's presence, we are so grateful. So grateful. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. morning. What a beautiful day. I didn't think it was going to turn out so good <laughs> about three in the morning. Did you all hear that? All oh, those trees were singing and dancing and bending. I thought, Ooh. then I got up, got on the road and look at what we have today. A beautiful day. This is why we live in the sunshine state, right? <laughs> and this we're entering the month of divine love, the power of love. The disciple that Jesus called after Peter, after he built that rock on the foundation of faith, of true faith, of divine faith, not fickle faith. Actually, the scriptures tell us that in Matthew and in Luke that he called the next three together at the same time. In the Gospel of John, all 12 were called at the same time. In the Gospel of Charles Fillmore, <laughs> the second one called was Andrew, which is strength. And the next one was Wisdom, which is James, the Sons of Thunder. And the third was John, the Power of Love. But I really like the idea of the three called together, because to anchor that faith, the children's curriculum for unity is based on a metaphysical guide for youngsters through the Bible and through Scripture. And they decided the powers would easily flow through the 12 months of a year, of a calendar year that a child could easily understand. And so they kind of shifted it a bit and had February as the month of love, because that is the month the children celebrate a season of nonviolence to honor Dr. Luther King and also Mahatma Gandhi. And it is the season of compassion, random acts of compassion, and a Valentine's. 
And so love was that next power selected. And so we've always used that in churches. But the more I read Charles' work, particularly in his 12 powers and mysteries of Genesis, that creator of that metaphysics curriculum knew what they were doing because that power needs to come right after faith. And we'll talk a little bit about that and why something that Charles wrote ensured me that that is certainly the next power that I need to build on in my journey of becoming that Christ, which is what this journey is all about, right? Recognizing and living up to that Christ that was is within us. So in Greek, in ancient Greek philosophy, they have categorized seven levels of love, and you'll recognize these. They're still used in modern circles today. Most of them, anyway, are recognized. But there's that first level or that first love that is talked about, and it is ludas, and it is that first puppy love, a crush. Remember that? That it's just a little more than a friendship. You kind of want to be around them more. There's that, that puppy love, that fresh, innocent fun. And then there's eros, and that's more of a romantic partnership. We want to be there all the time and see where that leads. And then there is philia, which is like Philadelphia, brotherly love. We've all experienced that, where you just... Um, Make that connection with a, with a brother or a sister in a friendly way. And then there's storge, which is storge, which is familial love. And that's the love we have for our parents, our brothers, our sisters, our children. And it is a deep love. But there is something in these levels that is conditional because it brings something to the people in the relationship. There's something in it for them. And any time there's something in it for them and why you stay in it and why it works for you, th that's a condition. There is also pragma, which is a contractual love. This is a, this is a mature love, a wise love, a committed love, perhaps a marriage, perhaps um, the raising of someone else's child. It's a long-term commitment love, but that's still conditional. Think about it. It's your choice, and you go into it with that commitment. But there's still something in it for you, or you wouldn't be in it. There's filiatia, which is not studied as much today as it should be. That is self-love. comes just before agape. And in this self-love, which I think should be the very first step that we're taught and that we teach our children, it is about compassion for ourselves, understanding the divine within us, and how much we are loved by God. Because when we start on that level of love, then we can truly give ourselves in a relationship without getting lost into it and draw to us that perfect balance that can lift us through these levels of love. But that's still conditional because it resides in the realm of the ego. So there's still a condition on that self-love. And then there's agape love, which is very difficult to explain in human words because it goes beyond our understanding. We can explain it, but how often have we actually felt it? And that is unconditional empathy, compassion, and love for everyone in all creation. And this is why I believe, one of the many reasons, but perhaps the main reason, that the throngs of people were drawn to Jesus because he exemplified agape love better than anyone that's been written about. There are masters that are at this level, but Jesus walked it in his persecution, in his life. He insisted his disciples learn that principle. My only commandment I leave you is that you love one another as I have loved you. And this was not about your kids. This was not about your brother. This was not about your girlfriend. This was about those Romans and Greeks. And that's hard for those of us that are trapped in this ego mind because that's really where existence thrives and lives. We wouldn't be a human species that has continued since cavemen days without the ego. <laughs> we would have been killed off long ago. So it's easy to get stuck in that realm because it's so human. But if we allow ourselves to follow these spiritual laws, these spiritual teachings, and practice them, we're going to find levels in ourselves that are profound. 
You know, I think about Mother Teresa when I think of this. T- see, to me, I, I'm still calling it courageous love because it still seems like something I have to really re- reach for, but it's in me. It's there if I unfold it. I think of Mother Teresa, and once in her letters that she would write to her priest, these sweet letters that she would write, she was talking about the children that she served, and the Indian son was, well, she served in Delhi, in a in poverty-stricken city, and it was so hot that through her sandals, she could just feel the heat radiating from the earth through her, and it was just overtaking her. It was so difficult those days. But when she got to the children and would go between the buildings and the little cracks in the walls and see them, and they were so joyous that she was there, all that went away. Her love for them, everything else faded. I really believe if more of us, perhaps not all of us, but if that tipping point got to this level of agape love, even even nanosecond, many problems right now would be solved. If we really understood the power of unconditional love, if we really, really saw each other as someone we deeply love, regardless of how they were raised, who raised them, what they've done, what they haven't done, what they look like, what they sound like, how they act, if we really stretch and believe that the power of God lies in us, to create that kind of experience, what challenges would we have? None. When we're we're loving at that level, even for a little while, even a small group of people doing little things with great love, we're changing the world. Because we're insisting that we raise the bar on other people and their experience on this planet. We're insisting that no child starve. Make no mistake about it. Children are starving, not because there's a lack of food, because we're not feeding them. Because we have priorities. Children in this country are starving and sleeping out in the streets. Not because there aren't homes and beds and blankets and pillows, because we're not taking care of them. Because our priorities lie in ourselves and getting that next item on the market, on the computer, on the internet. It's that simple. And I'm I'm not here to spank you. I'm I'm here to just wake us all up. Because it's that simple. And that's what Jesus' whole ministry was about. And that's why he sat with those who were shunned from the community for what would be today ridiculous. There are people now being shunned for what will be, in a few years, God willing, ridiculous. (laughs) It's just us. But I think one of the best definitions I've read about agape love is by Charles Fillmore. In his work, The Twelve Powers of Man. And he talks a little bit about this in The Mysteries of Genesis. And if you're into Charles' work and haven't read Mysteries of Genesis, I suggest you do. He goes through metaphysically Genesis, the creation story. It's profound. It's a hard read. At least it is for me. Because <laughs> Charles is like, I was explaining earlier today, you know when you're searching on a search engine on the computer and you've got a subject and you're researching it and it, oh my goodness, what would what did we do without Google? How did I write my term papers? I don't know, but we managed. But you know how you start searching and then something catches you and you go down that rabbit hole and then there's something, then there's something, then there's something. It's so fascinating. You find all this and then you think, what was I searching for? It's been three hours. I've got to start somewhere. <laughs> That's how Charles writes. And so you find yourself, well, where's he at now? Well, what was this about? How does that, well, let's go back to this. He's like that. And every subject is so well thought out and so brilliant. It just blows my mind what he knew. He needed very little sleep. He slept, they say, two to three hours a night. And stuff just poured through him. And he just constantly researched and researched and researched and put these things together. I mean, he realized about splitting the atom before that happened. These stories of creation and Mother Earth, before we had the connections and the knowledge we have now, it just, and this is what he said about love, about this level of love. Take this in and just realize the implication of this. Love is from God, and it is given to man in its purity, in its purest form. It is the pure essence of being that binds together the whole human family. Without love, 
we would lose contact with our Mother Earth. And losing that, we should fly off into space and be lost in the stardust of unborn worlds. Gravity is mortal man's name for love. By the invisible arms of love, we are held tight to Earth's prolific bosom. And there we find the sweetest home in all the universe. All love of home is founded on man's innate love for this planet. That blew my mind because you know what this means? What Jesus talked about, heaven on earth, what those in working now in subatomic particles and that whole physics field, we have chosen to come here. We have chosen to come and experience this. And Mother Earth is our garden. We read that in Genesis, especially when we start understanding it in its spiritual realm. We are, of course, the gardeners, the stewards, but Charles takes it further. We chose to come here to create a family collectively, to care for each other at this power, this force of creativity that is creating the very stars in the universe. It is becoming one with God. And that's done through the power of love that's already in us. That's really mind-blowing. And now we're starting to see that we are creating our experiences. And so the implications of that to me is, how are we caring for the very life force that sustains us every day and gives us every single thing we could ever need or want? Mother Earth gives us everything we need to survive. Everything that everything on this planet needs to survive. We don't need anything else. I mean, that's really quite big, isn't it? And I think about some of the early philosophers in the Transcendental Movement. Thoreau, was it Thoreau? I'm not sure. Who said, no hive can exist when a bee attacks its own. No tree can exist by cutting its own branches. No tree would be so foolish as to cut its own branches. So our work this week and this month is easy. Yes, it's about February and love, and it's time to chill, because we've had a rough few months, haven't we? And February is the month to just chill. It's the month of love. It's the month of bubble baths and long sunsets with your friend drinking wine and valentines and having random acts of compassion for complete strangers and being frivolous and wearing silk and running around and just having a great, that's February, eating some chocolate. Well, I've got to stop doing that, but <laughs> just enjoying. But in the meantime, how can we really take this call of unity seriously? How can we begin to create a world that works for everyone. What can we do for Mother Earth in our small way? For these next 28 days, how can we love Mother Earth back? How can we love this universe back for all that we have been so gifted with? We are so spoiled. How can we love her back? I don't know what that means for you. For me, it's planting a garden, planting a few trees, just cleaning up, getting rid of the garbage in my house, insisting on recycling and, and, and backing off on, on my imprint on the planet. But let's just really think about how we want to show up. So this is a fun assignment, really fun. Don't forget your bubble baths. My, my little granddaughter, Kinsley, she, she only has a shower at her house. <laughs> she can't wait to get to Grandma's. And she will spend two hours in that tub with all of her toys and Grandpa's shaving cream, and she's in heaven. That's all she needs for Grandma. <laughs> Whenever I get stressed, I think of just, I'm just going to take a bubble bath with all her toys. <laughs> but I want to leave our service today with this prayer of Mary of Nazareth, Jesus' mother. And this is really powerful. Just take this in this week and really contemplate this divine power that you have running in and through you, the power you have to change this planet. Now in this moment, I close my eyes and go within, and suddenly there is light, and only light, and in the midst of the light, a voice speaking to me. Rejoice, O highly favored daughter, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you, bless you. I said, blessed, right when you sneezed. That's so funny. 
<laughs> there are no coincidences. Blessed are you among women. My soul wonders, what can this mean? I am only a child. But spirit, spirit consoles me. Do not fear. Be not afraid. You have found favor with God. You are conceiving a divine idea. Ruler of the kingdom without end. My soul protests. To a human sense, there is no way. I am only a child, alone. But spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit has come upon you, and the power of the Most High overshadows you with love. Therefore, the idea to be expressed will be called holy, the child of God, for nothing will be impossible for God. Ah, my heart expands to hold so great a love. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in the Mighty One. The hunger of my soul is satisfied. I am in love. In all, through all, I am love. Behold, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. Let it be. Let love be. And I keep these things and ponder them in my heart. I am the love of spirit. I am Mary of Nazareth woman of power. Do something loving today. Oh, that's powerful. And now we move into that part of our service where we are able to give back to where we have been so richly blessed. And let us take our tithes and love offerings and say with full intention our prayer for them divine love flowing in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. You know, often I have you, I have the first service write love notes for the second service, and they just love to do that for you. But I left some blank pages for you guys. Maybe you'd like to write a love note for them so next Sunday morning our early risers can get a little love note from you. How will that be? Life is in me, moving through me, beyond question, steady and strong. Power and presence is my essence been within me all along what is there to be afraid of pure light is what we are made of light is in holy ground what is there to be afraid of yeah. pure light is what we are made of what is there to be Steady and strong, power and presence is my essence, been within me all along. What is there to be afraid of? Yeah. Pure light is what we are made of. 
song and let us say together our prayer for protection with full intention for the planet we live on the light of God surrounds us the love of God enfolds us the power of God protects us the presence of God watches over us wherever we are God is and all is well and one more thing Go Bucks! <laughs> I know Unity Village is really close to Kansas City, but Tampa, it's going to be an exciting day. <laughs> <laughs>